Santa Cruz City drops proposed moratorium on new cannabis businesses. So this story caught my eye because Santa Cruz is the home of the first medical cannabis business. In 1972, medical cannabis patient Valerie Corral had a car accident causing traumatic brain injury, headaches, and seizures. Finding that prescription medicine did not control her seizures, her husband suggested cannabis. It worked. In 1992, Valerie and Michael Corral were arrested for growing five plants. But the local district attorney dropped the case, claiming sympathetic jury would acquit. In 1993, the couple formed WAM, Women and Men's Alliance for Medical Marijuana, the first collective. In 2002, the DEA raided WAM, arrested the corral, and destroyed 150 plants. California Attorney General Bill Lockyer and several city officials condemned the raid. Several weeks later, members of WAM defied the federal government by handing out cannabis from the steps of City Hall. Valerie was a key player in the cra crafting and passing of Prop 215, the Compassionate Use Act, and WAM became the first collective to be granted nonprofit status in the United States. WAM has been called the most legitimate medical cannabis collective, and Santa Cruz is called by some the birthplace of the medical cannabis movement. I turned my head when I read the Santa Cruz City Council that the Santa Cruz City Council on Tuesday decided not to adopt the moratorium on cannabis dispensaries. In early March, the City Planning Commission approved the Hook, a dispensary in partnership with WAM. However, school superintendent Chris Monroe, along with several parents of students, appealed the approval, proposing an emergency moratorium on dispensaries. In response, many public speakers and written letters expressed deep concerns that the proposed moratorium was specifically targeting the hook. Like WAM, the hook plans to ensure that a portion of the products are offered for free or on a sliding scale to low-income patients. Changing rules retroactively on this applicant is beyond absurd. It is unethical and sets an incredibly subjective and bad precedent for the future, wrote Jenna Gallant, who submitted a letter to the council. I know for a fact that it's not good government to serve the needs of a few powerful people instead of the needs of the citizens of this community. At the Tuesday Council meeting, Valerie Corral urged the Council to follow the original recommendations of the Planning Commission. It really breaks my heart to be standing in this position after 32 years of work in the community. This is where we built medical cannabis, here, acting as allies, Corral said. Our mission is to overcome every obstacle that will prevent us from continuing our decades of service to the poor, to the sick, to the dying, and that's really our mission. It hasn't changed. I haven't gotten rich doing this. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. The not in my backyard attitude in Santa Cruz is surprising, but it's unlikely that this moratorium will pass. However, the intrinsic bias ingrained in our collective mind against cannabis lingers. It's good to look at history and see where we all came from. My primary objective remains to allow access to a plant that makes the sick and dying feel better. In the past, that wasn't, there wasn't much discussion on control, taxing, and other regulations. There was only a mission to be, the, to be compassionate and help each other. And now, Wham! and The Hook must resort to litigation against the city, the very partner with whom it successfully stood shoulder to shoulder to combat the ignorance of the federal government. Is this a sign that we have lost our way? What do you think? This is Dr. Jean Talleyrand with Hyatt 9 News. Man. It's sad. Yeah, it's, it's super sad. But shout out to, to Valerie and Mike Corral. They have been fearless in, in all of this. I mean, they even got deputized by the uh, Santa Cruz Sheriff's Department back in the day um, when, when, when after they got raided. So um, much respect to them and, and to Wham and all of the patients that benefit from their services.
I know there was. A... Well, the truth is that they they're rallying behind them, and and this is and the moratorium is not going to pass in Santa Cruz. It was just surprising to see that it was even an issue. Uh, agreed. I, I saw I saw there was a bunch of uh, uh, petitions going out in the last couple of weeks that 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 were involved in this. That I saw a number of different uh, cannabis advocates uh, re- reaching out to ask people to sign. I know I personally. Uh, signed it and uh, and and I wish them all the best that they possibly can have over there in Santa Cruz. What do you think about them giving out their weed for free? I mean, that was always kind of a lot of their model, though. So so that's not anything yeah. anything that's changed. That always was their model of of mainly focusing on um, on on sick, dying patients and and make sure and farming it at their farm and then providing it free of charge to the people that desperately needed it. So I, I don't see a lot of things that have changed from from that business model from when they originally started. If people trying to do the right thing. Glass houses, huh? What's a little that? bit. A little, a little bit, you know, and I mean, this goes back to our conversation we had earlier this week about, you know, MSOs having the power, you know, to own the narrative right now on the national stage. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a great opportunity for MSOs to come in and partner with these types of businesses that have the ear in the heart of the community. Mm-hmm. You guys have the pocketbook and you guys can't sell your your products, I'm not gonna call them boof, no. <laughs> but you can't sell your products uh, uh, righteously and you're retreating from these areas that need cannabis. And now you've left in your wake a bunch of, you know, people at odds with each other and no way for them to make money and to monetize and and, and to be solvent, mm-hmm. right? Um, instead of retreating from, uh, continuously retreating from established states, an easy way for them to win with these communities and actually get in good with the culture side of the industry, uh, the legacy side, uh, the medical side, the, the, the actual patients in established states who've known this is medicine for generations is to support them. Mm-hmm. And uh, and wham wham is truly to the 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 true uh, visual definition of weed for the people. Yes, indeed. You have anything to say on this, Elise? Why were they wanting to impose the mor- moratorium in the first place is my curiosity because there are quite a few dispensaries in Santa Cruz was it that they just didn't want any more was it uh, it was Emily's bakery a, c- a community staple or something that they that they used to take their kids to and they have nostalgia uh, uh tied yeah, to that well, or what? <laughs> uh, uh, it sounds to me it sounds like, like a um, bunch of Karens yeah, it sounds like me, a bunch of Karens, mm-hmm. uh, 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 children. You can't protect, and, and, and they're continuously refusing to protect um, legal business owners within their jurisdiction. Remember, uh, we had the, the story on uh, on on, uh, on Santa Cruz um, and San Jose, and, and how much their police budgets have swelled, despite mm-hmm. Jason's uh, bullshit saying that the defund the police is strong uh, up is. there in those areas. It's, it's not. They uh, Both of them, I think it's like 30 and 40 percent uh, increase since Joe Biden's taken uh, the presidency in their police budgets, yet they can't protect cannabis businesses, and they're trying to push them out when your own businesses, your own non-Schedule One peddling drug businesses, mm-hmm. they can't survive. And you know what? what? What is this business going to turn into? You can't move the dispensary in there. What's it going to be? Is it going to be a, a safe injection site? Is it going to be just a crack house? Like, like what, what's going to happen with this eyesore of a place, which can be generating decent tax revenue for your struggling community? Mm-hmm. There's no answer to that. It's just a bunch of BS rhetoric, and um, everybody needs to, just to stop. It doesn't matter if it's Democrats, Republicans. The people are suffering, and people need this medicine, and you're stopping them from doing it. 